We're about to enter a very strange place indeed. We're going inside the twisted mind of a firebug, a man who gets his kicks lighting bushfires. For the first time, you'll see and hear one of Australia's worst serial arsonists try to justify his crimes. Try to explain the summer of terror that prompted one of our biggest police manhunts. Like me, you'll be astounded by how matter-of-fact he is. Just couldn't give a damn about human life or the misery he was inflicting. And, of course, he's not alone. There are dozens, maybe hundreds more like him, out there. That's right, he's out there. Out of jail, on the loose. The heart's pumping like hell at the moment. I'm scared, you know, I'm starting to shake. The Australian bush ablaze. He's just here, he's just here, around the front. One of the most terrifying forces of nature. A monster that devours everything in its path. And yet there are those among us who get their thrills by unleashing this terror on the land. <coughs> I never actually thought about the general public. You never thought about lives, full stop? I think about anything. Peter Burgess is the worst of the worst. A serial arsonist who lit 25 fires in a matter of months and sparked the biggest criminal investigation in New South Wales history. How terrifying do you think bushfires are? They can scare the living crap out of anyone. And you're willing to unleash that on people? Without a second thought? Without a second thought. I certainly was. Every time you see or hear about a bushfire like this one, you can guarantee there's a 50% chance it's been deliberately lit. That's right, at least one in every two of these is the product of an arsonist. The issue here is uh, a man who is driven to light fires for his own particular needs, um, knowing full well that the carnage from fires is horrific. The, the risk of death is horrific. Forensic psychiatrists like Dr Jonathan Phillips rarely have the chance to get inside the mind of an arsonist. Burgess perfectly fits the profile. A psychopathic loner driven to light fires by a compulsion he was powerless to control. An arsonist is a person who's a misfit who doesn't fit comfortably in family or community, who has very few friends, who is totally preoccupied with self. Uh, we don't know all that much about what goes on in the arsonist's mind for that very reason. They don't talk. But incredibly, after two years in prison for his crimes, Peter Burgess is talking. A quiet, withdrawn man, he still finds it hard to express the dark forces that drove him to set deadly fires again and again. How many more fires would you have lit if you hadn't been caught? I couldn't say. Seriously couldn't say. It would have just continued? Possibly, yeah. People who have lost loved ones and their homes through fire would be horrified hearing you say that. Yes, I, I, I realise that. But, you know, what's the point? I could, I could make out that, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. But, but you yeah, did. But I did. I knew exactly what I was doing the whole time. Peter Burgess grew up wanting to be a fireman. Inspired by the New York Fire Brigade during 9-11, he tried to join the New South Wales Metropolitan Brigade, but they rejected him. Unemployed, he ended up as a volunteer in the Blue Mountains. I was out fighting a fire, you know. That's my day field. I, was, I wasn't sitting at home, I wasn't bored. Made you feel good? 
excellent. There was definitely some, some sort of excitement there. It was definitely the, the, th the thrill. There was a lot of more adrenaline. You'd get on the back of the truck with the boys, you know, and fly off to the fire and try and knock it out as quick as possible. He was very interested in riding up in the police vehicle. and To his volunteer uh, mates, like Captain Cole Byrne and, and Warren Day, mm -hmm. the young Burgess seemed overly enthusiastic for the job. We go out there to do a job, but he seemed to look for the thrill of it, I think. And as they risked their lives to fight those fires in the late summer of 2001, they had no idea the mate at their side was the one who'd lit them. They're pretty sour about it. Um, it's pretty low, uh, especially when you when you jib and your mates as well. So uh, I would say he's right down the bottom of the barrel. As his crimes went unchecked, Burgess became even bolder. He struck repeatedly, even on days of record temperatures and total fire bans. And get this, he then had the cheek to call Triple O on his mobile phone to report his handiwork. How are you, mate? Um, there's a big fire up the um, Waddington State Forest there at Duralong. Oh, in the bush, obviously. Yep. You would have seriously put people's lives under threat. Yeah, that's right. That close between being an arsonist and a murderer. As that hot, dry summer progressed, arson became a plague. Other firebugs struck, one sparking a massive blaze near Cessnock, north of Sydney. The fire was coming across the road in this section. Barclay Gillette's father, Bill, was cut off by the flames, incinerated in his car as he tried to flee to safety. The heat was so intense, he never stood a chance. For about 150 metres up the road, there were uh, two very black marks on the road, which we indicated that the, the tyres were actually melting on the road. The arsonist was never caught. A killer on the loose and likely to strike again. The crime of arson is an evil act. And the guy who lit the fire on the day is absolute lunatic. You know, really hot day, strong wind, absolute lunacy. What were they thinking? Peter Burgess wasn't thinking of anyone but himself as he continued his deadly arson spree. I couldn't get work, so I, I felt useless, you know. The only thing that would make me feel useful was you know, to go out and fight a fire. You're telling me you lit two dozen fires partly because you were bored. Yeah. That sense of power, that sense of being the big person for a split second is what this is all about. And um, the raging bushfire, the power of the bushfire, which he lit, becomes very, very important. That power and complete devastation is an arsonist's greatest protection. But modern forensics is now beginning to make it possible to pinpoint the smoking gun. You'd think, wouldn't you, that all the evidence would be burned at the scene? Yeah, you would think that, but it survives. I mean, there's little pockets the fire misses, you know. It, it moves quick, it jumps over it, and we, that's the little bits of evidence that we look for. Investigators like Senior Sergeant Alex Ryan from the West Australian Police can salvage even the smallest of clues. We've tracked the fire back down through here, and. This is, I believe, is our ignition area. And having now looked at this really closely, I've seen evidence of what started this fire. Where, it, where's the evidence? I can't well, see Well, if you come in here close, you'll see that this straight line is, in fact, the remains of a match. That's a match? That's a match. It looks just like a twig to me. How, how did you pick that out? It's different to the rest of the vegetation that's around. It's a straight line for a start. So, so an old-fashioned, common household match has survived it has. The blaze. So, and that gives us a, a good idea of um, how this fire was started. We know in this instance it's a match. 
there was no such evidence to link Peter Burgess to any of the fires that threatened Sydney in the summer heat of early 2002. But his constant knack for being on the spot when fires started drew suspicion and police soon had him under surveillance. He told us he couldn't give us stuff about anybody else. Does that give you a chilling feeling? Because it gives me a chilling feeling. Superintendent Brett Henderson headed Strike Force Tronto, set up to hunt the arsonist terrorising Sydney. This is a twisted mentality that we're dealing with. Somebody who doesn't care whether this thing ignites, doesn't care about the potential for it to kill people. Finally, in February, police swooped and arrested Burgess as he was about to flee to Victoria. It took nine hours of questioning until he finally confessed. What do you want to tell me, Mr. Lee? Tell me that fine. Why'd you do that? Stupidity. Okay. Burgess admitted everything and in handcuffs even took police on a guided tour of his crime scenes. We've had you under observation on other days as well. And there's been other fires. And uh, can you tell us anything about those? Didn't. You did it? OK. Did you always know you were going to get caught? I was hoping I wouldn't, but then again, I'm glad I did. Burgess was sentenced to two years jail, but surprisingly, never received psychiatric treatment. Yet he claims to be completely cured of his compulsion and wants forgiveness. Do you deserve to be forgiven? I'd like to be. I've changed my life around and I've bettered myself and there's no way that I'm going back to where I was. But it turns out this arsonist may find it very hard to break old habits. Since our first interview with Peter Burgess, we've discovered that even after serving jail time, he was still calling in fires. You went to Western Australia after you came out of jail. Yeah. And you tried to join the State Emergency Service while you were there, didn't you? Yes, I did. And while you were in Western Australia, you called in no less than three fires, didn't you? Yeah. You lit those fires, didn't you? No, I didn't. And this is the way the interview's going, it's finished. The problem of the arsonist is the underlying personality. It is that need for, for power, for success, for the thrill of the chase, really. And uh, that's embedded deeply in the personality of the arsonist. And there's not much known to me to suggest that that can be changed. Peter, let's stop the lies, shall we? Let's not stop the lies. I'm not lying. You went to the other side of the country and happened to be first on the scene for not one, but three fires. That's an amazing coincidence, Peter. It may be a coincidence, may not be, but I didn't let him say, so obviously it's a coincidence, isn't it? Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.